Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode here at Catholic Table Talk Podcast. This is the podcast where everything Catholic is on the table. Thank you again for joining us at the table this week. Great to have you on board. If you're new to the show, please look down in the description box below to find all of our sites to find uh, to find the to find the sites that we are on, um, such as iHeartRadio, Spotify, and that type of stuff. Today's episode was brought to us again by Dr. Katrina Wynn. Uh, she's a physician and medical doctor at mdkatrina.com. You can reach her out also at mycatholicdoctor.com. Um, so she can assist you with whatever you need. Um, thank you for Dr. Katrina Wynn for sponsoring today's show. Also, if you have a show topic or a speaker request, um, please email us at catholictt at gmail.com. Again, it's catholictt at gmail.com, the official email of Catholic Table Talk podcast. For today's show, we kind of keep going on with this uh, book, uh, kind of fundraising slash more like just book um, notice here. We've been doing this for the past few weeks, um, and it was brought to my knowledge that, hey, let's have another one. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I always love to have talk about other books that we can read about. And uh, there's a lot of really bad stuff on TV, on the internet. So uh, we have a good book to read. Highly recommend it. Um, so today's topic is on the new book from Tan Books, The Life of a Sister Mary Willemma. Um, and it kind of goes through our life. Uh, today we have a very special guest making our character we talk debut, uh, Sister Mary Josepha of the Eucharist. Uh, Sister Mary Josepha grew up in a Catholic homeschool family that fostered her interest in religious life from an early age, her father being a Marine. Her family moved frequently by the time Sister Mary Josepha was 12, she lived in nine different homes. She attended St. Thomas Aquinas College in California, where the liberal arts program, uh, Columbian and study of sacred theology, led her to pursue two more years of studies at the International Theological Institution in Gaming, Austria. In 2010, this year after she, the year after she finished her studies at the institute, she entered the benedictions of Mary, Queen of Apostles. When she entered the benediction of Mary, she was still in a temporary residence in Kansas City, Missouri, but they finished building the apartment monastery in uh, Guama, um, Missouri, and moved there where Sister Mary Jacinta was still a proselyte. Uh, she received her religious name in honor of St. Joseph in 2019. She was set as one of the founding members of the community's first daughter house of St. Joseph in the Ozark Mountains near Ava, Missouri. Having moved three times as a nun, she was looking forward to a fourth and perhaps a final move, um, hopefully next year. So with that, let's welcome into the podcast for the first time, Sister Mary Josefina. So Sister Mary Josefina, thank you for just what you do and for your time today to come on the show. Thank you for inviting me, William. It's a privilege to be here tonight. Awesome. Yeah. And- you know, the fourth sister we have out, had on the show, so it's a very great treat for, I'm sure, a lot of our viewers, listeners out there to have you on the show. So, like I uh, talked about in the intro, um, today's topic is the new book from Tan Books, which is a great company. If people have not bought it from Tan Books, I highly recommend it. Uh, please go to the website, tanbooks.com. They have a lot of great information and great books on there. Uh, the Life of Sister Mary and... I'm sure I'm mispronouncing her last name, or the name uh, with with Lima. Um, We're going to talk about her life. So the first question I have for you, Sister Mary Josina, um, how did Sister Wahima understand her vocation? And how did she understand this religious life? Because a lot of people don't really understand religious life. Yes, for Sister Wilhelmina, her vocation was very much a spousal union with Christ. She got the first seeds for her vocation when she was a little girl at her first Holy Communion, when she heard our Lord speak to her in her heart. And he told her, I want you to be all mine. Will you be all mine? And so she responded, yes, of course I want to be yours. But she didn't know yet what that meant, being such a little girl. And it was only as she grew up that she realized that meant 
the consecrated life of a religious sister. Um, so even at a young age, she had the sense that she wanted to belong entirely to Christ as a bride. Um, she, she ended up joining a teaching order when she graduated from high school, very young age of 17. And she served as a teaching sister in this active community for over 50 years. She taught in inner city schools for underprivileged children up and down the East Coast. And then she served as the community's archivist. But in the cultural turmoil of the 60s and 70s, her community started to experiment with various aspects of the religious life that Sister Wilhelmina recognized as being crucial to religious life. So they discarded the habit. They began to abandon communal prayer and silence in the monastery. And Sister Wilhelmina recognized that these were not just old, uh, old fashioned customs, like a holdover from times that didn't matter anymore, but she realized that they were safeguards. These were traditional observances that protected her identity as a bride of Christ. And so for years, she prayed and suffered and tried to found a traditional branch of her community, but there were no sisters who were willing to join her. So at the ripe age of 70, after over 50 years in this community, she decided, I need to start afresh. It's going to be more fruitful than trying to reform the old. And so in 1995, she left her religious family that she had loved and lived with for over 50 years and founded the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles. And so, um, you know, as, as we are now 25 years old, we, we hold on to Sister Wilmina's ideal that our, our identity is not just as a teacher or as a nurse or some sort of function that we fill, but it's about our identity as a bride of Christ, having that spousal relationship with Christ. We live it in a contemplative way in the Benedictines of Mary. Um, so we alternate work and prayer, and we try to follow Sister Wilhelmina's good example as a faithful bride of Christ. Right. And I think that kind of answer, answers the next question is kind of what was your purpose in finding the Benedictines of Mary? And I mean, yes. yeah, just, yeah, and just hearing. Uh, Jesus said to her, I want you to be mine at that very young age is, um, I think, something that we would, we always strive for. Um, we always want to do God's will. Um, but what a special um, just moment and just the grace that she received um, hearing the Lord's call to her in that moment is really, really great. Um, and I guess, I guess kind of want to ask, um, you know, I guess there's more, this is more for you on a personal note real quick. Um, just pop up a question here for you, sister. Um, just how did you hear about the um, mother, uh, mandate, mandate dream, uh, Mary Queen of Apostles? How did you know about it? And then like, um, again, like, um, yeah, how did you know about it? And where can people like go for more information on that? Yes. Yes, I found out about it from a close priest friend. I was okay. discerning religious life for some years, um, and I was looking for an order that would have the traditional observances and preferably the old office and liturgy, which are so beautiful and have nourished the faith and the contemplative life of religious for centuries. Um, so I spoke with this priest about it, and he knew this community from its very beginning. And said, really, you should go visit them. So I was blessed to have a personal introduction to the sisters. But we also have a website which has, um, which has been, I think, a, a means for other young women to come to know our sisters. It's www.benedictinesofmary.org. And it has a lot of information there about the monastic life in general and how we strive to live it in particular. Because we, we follow the old rule of St. Benedict from the 500s. We also have a Marian charism to emulate the life of Our Lady in her hidden life after the Ascension, when she provided a place of retreat and offered prayers and sacrifices for the apostles, the first priests. So similarly, we live the Benedictine life in its simplicity, and we strive to emulate Our Lady in that those last years of her life on earth. So we, we offer a place of retreat for priests, also for laity, um, and we pray and sacrifice for the priests and all the souls to whom they minister. Yeah, that's that's really great. Thank you for, like I said, I know it's a little off topic, but uh, 
wanted to get that out for anybody who's considering that uh, looking it up. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, so going back on track now, sister, um, just what was uh, you know, Sister Mary's Walima's uh for example to a younger woman joining her community? Because I mean, it's yeah. not easy. I mean, um, what was her example? Yes. Um I was very blessed to enter nine years before she passed away. So as a young novice, I would take care of her during the day, taking her to the various community exercises, praying the rosary privately with her. Um, and it was something that all the novices shared as a, as a duty during the day. And I think all of us considered very formative because we saw how a religious sister lives the, her faithful life all the way to the very end. One sister commented, everything that Sister Wilhelmina does is a prayer. She makes everything a prayer. And I was always struck by the way, um, if you asked her what she wanted to do, she would always counter it with, what does God want me to do right now? I want to do what God wants me to do. So she saw her whole life under that, in that light, you know, what does God want right now? And she saw all the events of the day in that providential sense, the good things and the bad things. She welcomed even the crosses as something from God's providence. So that was very beautiful, very formative for us as young sisters. Um, and then something also very strong in Sister's spirituality, Sister Wilhelmina had a very tender love and devotion to the Blessed Mother. And she said, if I could leave anything for my sisters, it would be a similar love and devotion to Our Lady. So uh, we all strive to grow in our relationship with Our Lady, to live our consecration to her. And we look to Sister's example and we say, well, Sister Wilhelmina would really like a rosary procession to celebrate this feast of Our Lady, or Sister Wilhelmina would really like a special rosary for this feast of Our Lady. So we have um, her example before us as we try to live that consecration to Our Lady. Great. Yeah, well, I mean, well, we wish to have for um, people following you and, I mean, for coming behind you, that's, that's a great wish. And, I mean, you got the one at the... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mary Queen of Apostles is, I mean, doing a great job with that. Um, you mentioned taking a boy, um, and we're finally used to places and everything. Um, just kind of discuss about her passing and then her exhalation. Um, because a lot of people don't really know about her, and yeah, yes. So we were, um, we knew that Sister Wilhelmina was getting, nearing the end of her life in 2019, early on, um, say in February or March. But at that point in our community's history, we were actually founding a daughter house. So we'd outgrown the Abbey. We were sending some sisters south to southern Missouri to start a new home. So we said goodbye to Sister Wilhelmina, thinking this is probably going to be our last time. And the six of us went south. Um, but in God's providence, Mother Abbess realized um, she said, sister's going to pass in the next few days. Let's get the sisters from Southern Missouri, from Ava, back home in time to see her. Um, so we got in the car and drove back up. And all of the community, all the sisters at the Abbey, all of the sisters from the mother, from the daughter house, were gathered in sister's cell for those last couple of days. We took turns watching. Um, but the day the sister actually did pass away, May 29th, the whole community was gathered there to pray, to sing her favorite hymns again. Um, we had a little recreation. Even though she wasn't able to speak at that point, her eyes remained closed. You could tell that she was listening because of her facial expressions changing. Um, and then we concluded that beautiful time together by praying Compline. And Mother Abbas sprinkled us all with holy water. And it was as she was blessed with the holy water that Sister Wilhelmina breathed out her last. So it was a beautiful thing for us all to be present for that. Um, and it, it, it was a grace that I think we'll all treasure. So it was four years later that uh, we finished uh, the Abbey Church. We were dedicating a side altar to St. Joseph. And we thought, well, this is the appropriate time to put Sister William's remains there. It's customary in Benedictine monasteries to have the remains of the founder or the foundress in the Abbey Church. So we exhumed Sister's body and we were going to bring it into the church. Um, but we were quite surprised when we opened the coffin to find that she, her body was still intact, quite remarkably so. And not only that, but her whole habit was still in perfect condition. Even though the lining of the coffin had all disintegrated, um, you could even tell that it had been lined. But her veil, her 
religious habit, everything was perfectly preserved. And we thought, what a sign from God that her hidden and humble life was so precious in his eyes and that the habit that she had suffered to preserve all her life it was preserved even in death for her. So it was a great surprise. Um, we didn't expect any, anything in the way of extraordinary graces, uh, but we, we take it as a, a special grace for our community and also a sign of hope for the rest of the world right now to remind them that um, the life of prayer, the life of sacrifice for traditions is valuable. Uh, God rewards that. And most importantly, that the life of the Christian life doesn't end with death. That's the beginning, you know, the beginning of the real life with God. Right, yeah. I mean, when I, well, yeah, when I, I have to agree with you, I mean, when I force, you know, when I force more about it, um, you know, we're made we're still intact and we'll be able to still intact perfectly. I mean, it just kind of gives you the chills that just gives you a little bit more belief in God and it just really, um, really hits hits home like wow this that's that that's so yeah i mean you, you know basically you're speechless um just so much with god's power and yeah and like you said when she passed away with the holy water i mean when so many people passing away at you know um maybe after a um sing the language she chat but praying the rosary um, I'm sure maybe a few people have passed away after the last final confession. So what, like you said, I mean, just being there and and that when she passed away at that moment, I mean, what, like you said, since the graces that went on from that day, um, yeah, I mean, that's not on the of, and that's, yeah, so. Um, so just kind of, Finishing up a couple more questions here, Sister. Um, what is Sister Melina's spiritual legacy to her community? I think you might have touched on that a little bit, um, but just on that. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I know she has a big impact on your life, um, but just like how how much, I just really explain like how big her life had impact on other people, other people at the at benediction, other people outside of the benediction, I mean, just in the surrounding community, um, out there in California. Um, just talk briefly on that, if you could. Sure. So, yes, I did touch a little bit on Sister Wilhelmina's spiritual legacy for the Benedictines of Mary for our community. Um, I would like to underline that she really wanted us to, to foster the tender filial love of our Blessed Mother. Um, so we... We have that um, example that she lived so beautifully. Uh, she wanted us to be very faithful to the traditions, you know, just as she suffered when her community began to abandon the traditional observance, the prayers, the traditional habit. Um, we, we value these all the more. <laughs> um, and I think that the extraordinary signs around her passing and exhumation were a corroboration of that. So we, we have many treasures that we continue to draw in from Sister's life. But I think um, for the rest of the world, the people watching, visiting, um, I like to think that they also can claim Sister as, as theirs, as an example um, and as a friend in the spiritual life. Um, again, she lived a very hidden life. She didn't have so many contacts, but now that she's, um, she's passed away, she's closer to God, please God. Um, perhaps she's a sign of hope to people around the world, and maybe they can turn to her with their needs. Um, there were so many people who visited the Abbey uh, starting in May when the word got out, but all through the summer it's continued, a steady stream of people who want to come. And I think it's strengthening their faith. Uh, they realize uh, the things that they were taught in catechism, they're true. You know? And I think that many have brought requests, you know, asking for spiritual favors, and I think that already some of those have been granted. So I pray that um, they look to Sister Wilhelmina for that for the good example that we benefited from, and also a sign of that hope um, that the, of the world that is to come. Yeah, absolutely. And like I mean, like you just said, I mean, people come in a lot to see you and it's right in their face. And I mean, like I said, it's, it really does. Um, we have moments like that it really does treat in your face and i mean 
when I was seeing this, um, we all have like disbelief at times, but when something like that happens, um, which it really strengthens your face your faith and and yeah. Um so just a kind of pop up question to end the show today, Sister Mary. Um, you know, like I kind of said a couple of times before this away, but like a lot of people didn't really know of Sister Mary winning uh, or would know anything about the uh, Mary Queen of Apostles. Um, how can like is there any other books on her? Is there you know anything that people can look up about to it? Um, or just kind of what are your recommendations if there is a young, um, young girl out there who's thinking about being a sister? If someone is really inspired by you know this whole with this whole thing, um, where can people learn more about Sister um, Mary Wilina besides the book from Tan Books? Yes, well, I do recommend that they visit our website, www.benedictinesofmary.org. It has a lot of information about our community, but it has a special page for Sister Wilhelmina with pictures and even videos, um, lots of, of information about her. But then especially for the young women who are interested in religious life, um, there's a, a part um, about discernment, about pursuing one's vocation. And information for how to contact us to set up a potential visit, a come and see visit. So there's a lot of information on the website. Um, I think it's a good resource for for young women who are looking into religious life. Um, and I, I I hope it would also be inspiring for people who want to learn more about religious life in general, or Sister Wilhelmina and our community in particular. So again, our website is www.benedictinesofmary.org. Awesome. Yeah. We have folks, and I'll put it down in the description box below so it's easy access for anyone who's looking to uh to get at. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess I have one more question. Um, just going forward, um, with so many people wanting to come see Sister Willina, um, is there still time to see her? Um, is there, yeah, I guess kind of what I know, I guess the plans for it. Um, can people come uh, make a schedule if they, if they, are you guys still open to that? Um, just talk a little bit about that. Yes, so um, on May 29th, the anniversary of Sister Wilhelmina's passing, we brought her into the Abbey Church and enclosed her in the new altar dedicated to St. Joseph. Okay. But we put a plexiglass cover on the front. So anyone who visits our Abbey Church, if they come in, they'll see Sister Wilhelmina there under the altar. Um, so it's still a place um, where they can pray to her and um, ask her for favors. Uh, of course, we have to be very docile to the church's uh, procedure in these matters. So not to speed up the process at all, just to follow Holy Mother's Church, Church's lead. Uh, she has to do careful investigation in cases like this. But we're very glad that the, the, the presence of our foundress in our Abbey Church is a grace for us. And I, again, I hope it's a grace for others, a sign of hope for them to see her there. The Abbey Church is open most of the day, I think from about 8.30 in the morning till about eight in the evening. So visitors come through uh, pretty much throughout the day. Gotcha, yeah, awesome. Thank you for that, and yeah, there you have it, folks. Uh, yeah, look up the benediction uh, my website, and if you inspired, Get a hold of uh, Sister Mary Josefina or any you know, other sisters and make a make a schedule trip out there. Um, Sister Mary Josefina, um, well, about our time, but I want to thank you just so very much again for taking the time today to come on the show. Um, just being with Sister Wilina, um, it's I mean, it's just speaking with you here today. It's really been an honor, just really been a treat for me and at least I'm sure it's been a lot to our listeners as well. Um it's really been inspiring for me. And uh thank you for all the great information and just talking more about the story and the life of uh the founder of Mary Queen of Apostles, uh Saint Mary Willina. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. All right, God bless you too. That's Sister Mary Josefina again. Uh, the benediction, uh, Mary, Mother, uh, Queen of Apostles out there in California. So, uh, 
Again, I have the website down below for your convenience if you like to look at. And again, look up more about Sister Wilina because it's a very inspiring story. And like Sister said, like I said, it really kind of strengthens and gives you chills about the faith and knowing that yes, God is real. Um, and yes, people love him and they will, like Sister said, I mean, sacrificing and suffering uh, is how important. It's all necessary. It's just what you need to do. Um, so yeah. Say yes to God's cover day because guaranteed, um, it might not be the easy world, it might not be the way that you want, but it's the best way, it's the way that He wants it for you, and God knows best. So who are we to argue, right? Um, so otherwise, folks, thank you again for taking the time today to listen or watch the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, with another great episode of Catholic Table Talk Podcast. The podcast, rather than Catholic, is on the table.